What is up, everyone? Gregos TV Rewind, the show where we go back a week and give you all of your tech news in one single video and another huge week of Galaxy S11 news and rumors came out this week. So if you're into that stuff, which I know a lot of you guys are, definitely check out this week's episode, which is last week's news. But regardless, it still has a ton of information. We also have a ton of information on the Snapdragon 865, which will be in the Galaxy S11 line of phones, at least here in America and a bunch of other countries as well. And it's a crazy powerful processor. And one little thing, 8K video recording. It's going to be crazy. Enjoy the show. Let me know what your favorite news story is of the week. And I will see you in the next one. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the stable release of Android 10 for Galaxy S10 phones. Previously, it had only come out in Germany and now it's released in more countries as well. So the release is, the stable update is now rolling out to beta users in India, Poland, Spain, and the UK. Now you previously have had to have the beta version of Android 10 on your Galaxy S10 phone in order to be getting this download. It's not officially out for everybody that just wants it, that wasn't on the beta previously. But still, it's very, very good sign. I mean, we're getting inch, we're inching closer and closer and closer. America still probably will fall up to the end of the month or at least January of 2020. If you watched my news show yesterday, you would have seen that Ice Universe tweeted out a photo of the glass protector for the Galaxy S11 phone, showing off the camera hole punch in the top and the middle, very, very small, along with very minimal bezels. Well, today he I tweeted out a the bottom of this today. I don't know why he broke it up in two, but maybe to prolong it, but you can see very, very, very small bezels. It's exactly what you would expect from a Galaxy S or Note device at this moment with the very, very small bezels. And uh, it's really all you see, but it's still a really good indication that this phone's gonna look almost identical to what we got with the Note phone. But still, it should look really, really cool with amazing specs and just, I think it's gonna be a blow away phone, especially this year. The next few stories are deals and they're seriously crazy. They're all Samsung deals. Get your wallets ready. The first one you can see here is Samsung Galaxy Buds. These are available on Amazon for $99.99. This is the lowest price they've ever been. Uh, you can get them in black or silver. And again, they're $99.99. Everything is linked down below in the description. The next deal is pretty crazy as well. This is on eBay. Now, eBay has a, you can see, buy directly from the Microsoft eBay outlet store. This is a brand new from Microsoft, but it's still the same Galaxy Note 10 Plus you can buy anywhere else. It's the lowest price I've ever seen. It's $699.99. You don't have to trade in a device. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It's literally just $699.99 for a Galaxy Note 10 256 gigabyte model. It's a crazy, crazy low price right now. Again, that is linked down below as well. And then lastly, if you head over to the Samsung store and you want to get a Galaxy Note 10 or Note 10 Plus, they have a crazy deal going on where they're going to give you $500 of instant credit when you choose to buy the Galaxy Note 10, Note 10 Plus. It doesn't matter if it's 256 or the 512. And you can use that $500 instant credit immediately. So basically, you can get a Note 10 Plus and almost get a Galaxy Tab S6 for free, you have to actually end up paying an extra 50 bucks, but that's crazy. You can get a watch and you know headphones for free or a watch, headphones and a case for free. There's all kinds of deals you can work to get this $500 extra in here. It's an amazing deal. Again, that is linked down below as well. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is T-Mobile has officially, as of yesterday, launched 5G nationwide. And you can see from this map, if you don't look at it very closely, it looks like it's everywhere, but then you can see it's the dark pink areas where the 5G has launched, which is still a considerable Consider it, you know, part of, you know, the United States. It's, it's still a lot of areas right there. So if you have a 5G phone and you're on T-Mobile, um, you, potentially you can have 5G where you are. Uh, let us know if you are and if you what kind of speeds you're getting so far with their 5G. If you have a Galaxy Note 10 or Note 10 Plus unlocked version, like myself, if you didn't see my video today, make sure you watch it. Um, there is an update out for this right now, a December security update that you can download. I don't think it's out for any of the other carriers here in the United States just yet. I believe it's just the unlocked version. So go in there to software updates and settings 
and you should see that update and be all set with it. And the last story of the day is a rumor coming out of South Korea about the Samsung Galaxy Fold 2. Now the Galaxy Fold 1 literally just came out. It was supposed to come out in April and it looks like it came out, you know, when did it come out in, I forget what month, September, October is when it came out. Well, the Galaxy Fold 2 is rumored to come out in 2020, February 2020 to be exact is what the rumor says. And it's supposed to be, have a cost that starts off at $850. That's insane if they do this. This is like mere months from the release of the Galaxy Fold. And it kind of throws off everything that we thought about the Galaxy S11 as well. So the rumor is that they would launch the Galaxy Fold 2 and the Galaxy S11 together. It'd be the same launch, which to me, I don't think they're gonna do that, but who am I? Maybe they will. The other thing that throws off is, if you remember, one of the rumors coming out is that they're gonna release a Galaxy One phone, which would be the launch of a basically a Galaxy S11 phone plus with an S Pen. And that throws that off because why would they do that and kind of kill the steam of that with the Galaxy Fold 2? And then what are they gonna do at the end of the year? They're not gonna have a, a flagship phone because that's when I thought the Fold was gonna come out. It throws everything off. So I don't know how, how much you should keep this rumor um, in mind in terms of it becoming true. I, I don't know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? That Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus. Now these are just regular buds. Galaxy Bud Plus already are confirmed on Samsung's official website. They have support pages up. There's nothing really on there except for the model number, which is SM-R175. And again, they have this, diff, uh, this up. So you're knowing that this is basically confirmed at this point that these are gonna be the Galaxy Bud Pluses. The other big thing about the Galaxy Bud Pluses that are uh, popping up online is that they should support active noise cancellation, which gives you the ability to block out that outside noise. So if you're on a plane or you know, you're trying to block out some of the noise around you in the city or the cars or whatever's being on, you know, kind of broadcasting into your ears while you're listening to music, it'll help, you know, just alleviate some of that noise. It's not gonna completely block it out, but it will cut it at least in half, if not more, and, and allow you to enjoy your, your tunes or your podcasts a lot better. Now, if you remember, the regular Galaxy Buds are 129. I'm guessing the Galaxy Bud Pluses, they could maybe just replace these and be 129, but I highly doubt that. That I think they'll still sell these and maybe they'll even drop these to 99 bucks and probably sell the other ones for, I would guess, 199 or like 159 or 179, but I think they'll be, quite a significant price increase over the regular ones, but I also think they're gonna sound a lot better too, just based off all the, you know, the plus moniker added to it. Next up is a bit of a crazy rumor right now, and it is that the 2020 iPhone is rumored to have an under display ultrasonic fingerprint scanner supplied by Qualcomm. Now, why is that crazy? It's crazy because iPhone has been putting down fingerprints ever since they stopped using them, that they're not secure and that you don't need them and that face unlock or whatever they call their face ID is so much better when you don't use your face unlock. And I actually don't disagree with them. And I don't know if this rumor will come true. I'd, be, I'd actually be very shocked if they go back to adding a fingerprint sensor as an unlock method to their phones. I think they'll just keep face unlock on there uh, for people to unlock their phones. I don't think they're gonna add the fingerprint sensor, but Again, this is a rumor, we'll see what, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't, what do you guys think? Speaking of the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that's in the Galaxy Note 10, as you can see right here, the S11 could allow you to scan two fingerprints simultaneously. And they say that because Qualcomm has just announced their new fingerprint recognition system, which will be most likely in a lot of 2020 phones, including the Galaxy S11. It's 17 times larger than the current one, that Samsung uses. Also, it, has, it enables accuracy rate of one in a million versus one in 50,000 right now. So it's a huge increase in terms of you being able to get your fingerprint accurately pressed onto the screen and get it to unlock your phone. I am definitely excited about this. The fingerprint sensor on the Galaxy Note 10, it's decent. I mean, you can unlock your phone. It's just that, I don't know, it's not, it, I would love to basically press it anywhere almost on the screen and also be a lot faster. So I'm very much looking forward to this uh, improvement in the fingerprint sensor on the Galaxy S11. 
And the last story of the day, try not to laugh, these are reported Galaxy S11 cases. Now, the Galaxy you know, S11 and E and S11, the cameras don't look that bad. They look a little bit long, but the S11 Plus is ridiculously huge. Look how big that is on the right-hand side there. Oh my God, it leaves almost no room for the rest of the body at the top of the phone in the back. Oh my God, it's insanely big. I mean, it's whatever. It's just a, you, you look at the back of the phone, but not really. You're looking at the screen more than anything. And that is huge. It's going to make the back of the Galaxy Note 10 Plus look like a little baby. It's literally going to go to like right here. It's so crazy. Let's get into the tech news. We only have one story today about the Galaxy S11. We've spoken about it in the past, about it possibly having the video capability recording of 8K that's right, 8K, 30 frames per second, and it looks like it's a foregone conclusion at this point. Sam Mobile is reporting, this is an exclusive story from them, that the Galaxy S11 will be capable of 8K video recording. They go on to say that they found this in the teardown of the camera app. Also, Exynos 990 processor, which will be powering the S11 internationally, will have that capability, as well as the Snapdragon 865, which we're looking at the specs for it right here. Look smack dab in the middle for camera, 8K video capture. Guys, this is gonna be crazy, and it looks like it's, like I said, almost definitely going to be in there. And then speaking of the Snapdragon 865 as well, this is a crazy, crazy processor. It's gonna be 25% more faster, better performance than the 855. So that's a pretty significant jump. And 5G is mandatory with this processor. So any phone that has a Snapdragon 865 has to be able to do 5G. Let's get into the tech news, but before we do, I wanted to remind you guys, I really, really appreciate if you would send me a 30 second or less video letting me know which smartphone is the best smartphone of the year and send it to greggles.tv at gmail.com. Um, I love having, I love doing this stuff and interacting with you guys and putting a video out and getting you guys on the channel. So I've only honestly received like two or three videos at this point. I really would really like to get at least 10. So if you wanna be in it, Shoot it over to me as soon as possible. It's only gonna take, hold up your phone, talk for a second, tell me what the best phone is, and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Really, really easy. And again, I would super appreciate it. First story of the day is the Galaxy Note 10 Plus Special Star Wars Edition is officially up for order at this point. So if you wanna order it, it starts off, or it is really, $12.99. You can trade in a device and get it to as low as they say, $961.99. And with it, again, you get a special Star Wars Edition of the Galaxy Note 10. Plus, you also get the red X, uh, red pen. You get Galaxy Buds that are red and black. You get a special metal Star Wars pin. I think it looks great. I, again, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I think it looks pretty damn cool. Comes in 256 gigabytes. That's the only size and it's linked in the description down below. Next up, the Galaxy Note 10 fourth beta update has been pushed out and you can see right here, it brings with it a few improvements such as improved app entry performance, so it opens up apps a little bit quicker, reboot incur occurs while playing music, so it's fixed that, no vibration when separating the S Pen, an issue where the save cancel icon did not appear while writing, writing off screen memos, an app cannot run normally despite all permissions allowed. Let's fix that. Overlapping recent apps view and apps screen. Issue where the app icon disappeared and the issue of restoring lock screen default theme when powered on and off after downloading and applying theme. This update came out even sooner than uh, the last one. I mean, it was, I think it was about a week since the last update's been pushed out. So very nice to see this. It might not be out exactly um, where you are, but just give it a chance and it should be out very, very soon. And the last story of the day comes out for the Galaxy S11 Plus. And this tweet comes from Ice Universe. As he says, as I guessed a month ago, the Galaxy S11 Plus really uses a 5,000 milliamp battery. You can safely use 120 hertz display because obviously 120 hertz display on your, your Galaxy S11 Plus will use a lot of battery or somewhat a lot of battery and this should help alleviate that. And you can see the photo right here as we zoom into it, 5,000 milliamps. So very, very large battery. The largest battery on a Samsung Galaxy 
uh, flagship phone ever. I truly, truly feel, I mean, we've had some nice Galaxy phones in the past years. Don't get me wrong, Note 10 Plus, awesome phone. I really feel like the Galaxy S11 Plus is going to be the, the largest in terms of like feeling upgrade in a very, very long time. You're talking huge camera upgrades with a 108 megapixel camera and a five times telephoto lens, um, multiple, multiple, multiple cameras on the back as well, which we already have now, but even more cameras at that point, um, up to 45 watt charging, a 6.9 inch display, 120 hertz display, 5,000 milliamp battery, Snapdragon 865, 12, mostly, it's gotta have 12 gigabytes of RAM, fast storage. It's gonna be a huge, huge phone in terms of what it's gonna give us, guys. I really think a lot of people are gonna be blown away this year. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is OnePlus. Looks like they're releasing a new mid-tier phone with a much better price. It looks like this could be potentially called the OnePlus 8 light i kind of don't expect them to use the word light in there but you never know but it looks like it will be a mid-tier phone and it looks very very similar to what you get with the galaxy phones at this point with the center hole punch hole for the uh, camera in there and then in the back you do have uh the cameras on the back there with the raised edge for the camera so it doesn't look like it's going to be flush with the body but other than that this phone looks to be there's not a lot to be known about the phone just yet just that it would be a mid-tier phone um, potentially with a 6.4 or 6.5 oled display with a 90 hertz refresh rate um, they don't know about the processor or ram but they're they're again they're guessing that it'll probably have maybe a little bit less ram than previously given on some of the other oneplus phones and also it probably won't have the snapdragon 865 it'll have a lower tier processor but regardless if you're looking for the oneplus experience you'll probably get it with this one in a very uh inexpensive more reasonable price and the last story of the day, as you can see from the headline, is about the Galaxy S11 E 5G. It looks like it'll come with 25 watt fast charging. Now this is an upgrade over the previous generation. Previous generation of the Galaxy S line of phones was 15 watt. Now the 5G version of the S10 Plus did come with 25 watt charging, um, but it looks like across the board, all the phones will have 25 watt charging. And then you're probably wondering, well, will they support 45 watt as well? S11 Plus definitely probably will be, and then I can see maybe them not adding that to the S11 and the S11e just because they want to create some kind of differentiation. Also, you probably won't get the 45 watt charger in the box if your phone is able to do 45 watt charging, but if you get the S11e, S11 or S11 Plus, most likely it will come with that 25 watt charger like it did with the Note 10 line of phones. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is a really, really good deal going on right now. If you want the Pixel 4 or 4XL, it's available on sale at Amazon right now. So for the uh, Pixel 4XL, you can get it for $849, which is $150 off. But the cool thing is it also includes a Google Wi-Fi system a one pack of that so if you need a router and you want a phone at the same time it's a perfect deal uh, to get uh, with that otherwise you can get the pixel 4 for 7.99 again with that same google wi-fi system good deal right now it's linked in the description down below and the last story of the day is about the samsung galaxy s 11. If you stick with the channel, we have news or rumors about this phone almost every single day. Today is no different. And it's all about a tweet from Ice Universe saying the Galaxy S11 Plus uses a 1 and 1 3rd inch 108 megapixel Samsung exclusive custom sensor. Now they're talking about the camera, which is superior in quality to ISOCELL bright HMX and has a high cost. Now, Samsung did develop that 108 megapixel sensor with Xiaomi, but this one is, I guess, slightly different. It's a customized version of it. Um, it doesn't obviously go into detail as to, you know, why it's better or what it's gonna offer over the other one, but it's always great and awesome and positive to see that we're gonna potentially get something that's even better than, than, than they've already released and given out with maybe some other phones that Xiaomi's put out. And now we're gonna have this on the new Galaxy S11 line of phones. And remember, I say it all the time, Galaxy S11, Snapdragon 865, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 
a ton of storage, fast wireless charging, 40, up to 45 watt charging, no headphone jack, don't worry about that. Huge improvements on the back with the camera and a, up to a 6.9 inch display. It, guys, and that's just the tip of the iceberg of what we think we know. There could be an S Pen with this um, to eliminate the Note line and this could be the new Note line. So there's a ton of things going on with this phone. I think. 2020 is going to be a huge year for phones. iPhones are looking to be a huge upgrade. OnePlus will probably be a huge upgrade. LG, everybody that puts phones out, it's probably going to be a huge, huge year. And, and foldable phones are going to be huge this year as well. So it's going to be an awesome year ahead of us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. Question out to you guys. Not which, which phone are you most excited about? It might not be a phone you're buying, but maybe you're excited about the new Galaxy Fold coming out. You want to see what they're going to do with it. Or maybe it's the new Apple phone and you're just interested in it, but you don't want to buy it. Whatever device it is, let me know in the comments down below which device you're most excited to learn about. Maybe not necessarily buy. It could be a phone you're going to buy, but you're just curious about it. For me, it's definitely the foldable phones that are going to be coming out, especially with Samsung. I'm really curious what they're going to do and add to that. Is it going to be a device I actually want and that, that I feel safe buying and that it's not too expensive. That's my choice. Thanks for watching. And remember guys, I'll just do, I put a little message in the beginning. Don't forget, this will be the last day I do it because I'm <laughs> tired of asking. Send me a 30 second video, your phone of the year. Hold up your phone. Hey, Greggles, what's going on? My favorite phone of the year is blah, 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. Whatever your reason, it just give me your phone of the year. I'm, I'm trying to get at least 10 videos. I have like five. It's gonna be a lame video, it was only five minutes. Plus, I don't think I have any females yet that send it. So come on, ladies, let's do it. Thanks for watching, see you down the road. Peace.